Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Collecting Vintage Unopened podcast. My name is Brandon Stewart. Uh, this podcast is devoted to discussing anything and everything in regards to the collecting of vintage, unopened sports and non-sports cards. And a lot of times on this podcast, I like to interview unopened collectors uh, and people that share the passion. And tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing Derek Jensen, who is a Dale Murphy collector and has a lot of other cool unopened items in his collection. Derek, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. My pleasure. So um, the question I usually start with is, uh, you know, what is your background in the hobby and how you how did you get into collecting unopened? Uh, so background first, uh, I read somewhere once that uh, the year that you turn 11 is probably the year that you collected the most. Uh, for me, that was 1987. So and that that's definitely true for me. So it, and that's a pretty classic year in, you know, the design, I think, of sports cards at 87 Tops, 87 Fleer, 87 Donruss, all really classic designs. So, of course, that's kind of right at the beginning of the junk era, overproduced, but uh, I have a lot of stuff from, from, or at least I had a lot of stuff from that uh, tight time frame. Uh, the, the first... I, I pulled a couple of cards from my original collection. The first pack I ever opened, so I started collecting 86, 87, and I bought a pack of 82 Fleer, and I pulled this out of it. Oh, wow. So there's my Ripken <laughs> uh, Fleer 1982 Fleer rookie card. Uh, so I got hooked right away <laughs> uh, with my first pack that I ever opened um, as a kid. <clears throat> So you opened yeah. one you opened one pack of 82 Fleer and that was in it. That was in it. Oh wow. That's so cool. And that was that's the exact card you pulled. Yeah. So I had that I have a few cards left for my original, you know, mm -hmm. collection as a kid. This is one of them. And I sent it off to PSA to get it slabbed. Um, luckily it came back with a decent grade. I didn't really get it for the grade. I got it more for the protection than anything. Um <clears throat> Another, I, I collected Wade Boggs as a kid as well. So this is my 83 Tops Wade Boggs rookie card from when I was a kid. I'm surprised it got an eight uh, with all the, you know, over 30 years of moving between penny sleeves and uh, different binders and stuff that it's still in that kind of condition. But anyway, that was, that's me as a, a kid. I kind of fizzled out collecting late 80s, early 90s. Um, then I got back into collecting again about five years ago. My parents were moving out of their house. My All my stuff was still there. So I went back and uh, gathered it all. Um, so I started collecting again. And I, I first got into the unopened stuff um, <clears throat> to, I was one of those that was trying to like find mint cards um, early or late 70s, early 80s. Uh, maybe send them off to PSA or whatever. Um, I've learned, and uh, many in the group know this, many in the vintage wax and packs group know this, that it's somewhat of a losing proposition to just rip a bunch of stuff trying to look for gem mint cards. Um, so but then I discovered the vintage wax packs group on Facebook. Um, and I discovered one thing that I really like about vintage wax um, and packs is that is the unique quality of them, like the one of one kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's hard to find that, especially in the '80s. So quite a bit of '80s stuff. It's fine. It's hard to find that, like just in regular base cards or or graded cards or whatever. But as far as the um, unopened stuff, wow, lots of unique one of one items, and that got me hooked. Uh, so I've been doing, you know, the unopened stuff for, uh, I don't know, three or four years now. Sure, sure. Well, I think you you hit the nail on the head for, I think, a lot of us that do this. It's the fact it's, there's anyone who wants a PSA eight, 1980 top Nolan Ryan card, you can find one. Assuming you have the funds to buy it, you can get it, right? That's not a particularly difficult thing. You know, maybe centering, you know, maybe some cards are harder than others, but how many 1980 tops rack packs are out there with Nolan Ryan showing or cello packs? Right. right. Yeah. The number's infinitesimally smaller, right? So to me, I'm right there with you with the rarity and especially those really unique 
unusual items. I think you and I actually, we, we've joked in the, in the Facebook group, you and I have similar taste on some things. I think we've outbid each other a few times, but you really, you seem to really pursue those unique items, which is pretty cool. How, how did you get into uh, Dale Murphy specifically? Because you have a lot of Dale Murphy unopened. Yeah. Uh, well, I collected as a kid, I, I tried to get complete runs of a few players. Mm -hmm. um, Wade Boggs, Andre Dawson was another. But Del Murphy was uh, one of was kind of my, you know, one of my heroes, childhood heroes as a kid. Um, he lives now in the same area where I grew up as a kid. So he lives in Utah. Um, he actually lives near my brother, of oh. all things. Anyway, um, and I live in Idaho, so I, I, I'm not too far from where he lives. Uh, so he's kind of like a hometown hero as well, I guess, if you could say an adopted hero. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, uh, a lot of people in the area where I grew up um, adopted Dale Murphy as kind of their player. And also, you, I don't know if you remember this or not, um, if you lived in any place that didn't have a, a ball market in the mm -hmm. 80s, um, basically, you got to watch two teams. You got to watch the <laughs> Cubs or the Braves because they were on cable TV and that was it, right? Absolutely. So everyone that wasn't near a, a ball market, they were Cubs and Braves fans and they were kind of two of the worst teams of the 80s. But um, <laughs> it, Dale Murphy was a super highlight on that Braves team throughout the 80s and uh, got to watch a lot of games with him. Sure. Sure. Yeah. No, my family, they're all, I'm a Reds fan. Just ran, I'm the only one that is, but yeah, the, the rest of them are all Braves fan because the TBS WGN, that was pretty much, those are your options. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite Dale Murphy moments is actually when Tom Glavin had to throw at him. Oh yeah. <laughs> when, he, when, he, when he went and played, I think he was with the Phillies. By that Phillies. Point. Yeah. Right. That was yeah. like, this is such a weird baseball, such a weird game sometimes, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, no. So, yeah, no. Well, that that's really cool. Um, the geographic proximity. So, are you a, a Brave? Is the are the Braves your team to this day, or was it just no, Dale Murphy? I'm wearing I'm wearing my team. Oh, shirt. okay. So I'm a Padres fan. I I went to graduate school um, in San Diego. Okay. And went to a lot of games there while I was there. So, yeah, I I don't know why I always choose losing teams, but <laughs> these were kind of good right now. Yes. Well, uh, you got you. Well, you guys are stacked, and you're willing to spend the money, which is yeah the opposite of what the Reds have done. So that's yeah. <laughs> so for the moment, at least for the for this mm -hmm. window of time, the Padres sure. are actually cool. Yes. Yes. What were you heartbroken with with the Tatis PED stuff, or were you surprised uh, by that? You know, I even when even before that. I was always hesitant to really collect. I'm not really a modern or, or, or um, what are they called now, ultra modern card collector. Sure. Um, I pick up a few things here and there, but I was always hesitant to collect anything Tatis just because he's so injury prone. Uh, mm -hmm. He's never played a full season. He's always been out a month or two in, in any given season that he's ever played. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, super electric and super fun to watch but i you know when he when that came out i was like uh, uh i i wasn't like fully invested in the tati camp tati's camp anyway so i it, it didn't bother me too much sure yeah no to me i wasn't i'm i'm never really surprised anymore when I, i'm surprised in the sense because people know what the consequences are because they're clo so clearly stated now yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing that surprises me is that people's people. The fact that people still do it is surprising, but I wasn't particularly surprised by him. But he is he's a talented ball player. I think you guys have some. Uh, so growing up. So it really started your Padres fandom started in grad school. Yeah, that was a little later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and do you have any uh, like a favorite Padres player to collect in unopened or is it Tony um, the obvious one? Yeah. Uh, Tony Gwynn. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've got several Tony Gwynn things. I've got one coming in the mail. Um, I, I messaged you about this like a week ago. There was a, a, uh, minister that died in California mm -hmm. and his buddy, 
um, he calls himself El Jefe Grande, mm -hmm. uh, sold off his collection. Uh, I think several people in the group saw it, but all these 83 Donruss racks all of a sudden appeared and all mm -hmm. these 84 Donruss racks and several cellos from 83 and 84 tops and, and others. And it was like, it was, it was a pretty cool collection. Um, and I'm not sure that El Jefe Grande really knew it, exactly what he had, uh, but some of that stuff sold for really well. I, I picked up the Gwyn cello from that. The, it was 83 tops Gwyn cello. Um, well, I'll, and just announced today that PSA is gonna bring back their value service level on um, pack holders. So I'm gonna send that in, see yeah, that's, what happens. Yeah, 30, to, $30 now, right? for the for yeah that's fantastic that's yeah. that's what it should be um now there's going to be a flood of people like us who are sending yeah. their, sending their packs and finally the packs we've been sitting on yeah no you can't go wrong with gwen and gwen is one of those he has so many nice cards like some players just for whatever reason they just don't have cards that are that look nice to me literally i'm trying to think of a tony gwen card i don't like and i can't think of one Nolan Ryan's another one. Every single Nolan, other than maybe 76 tops, because he looks, he's just sitting in the dugout looking upset about something. Other than yeah. that, I think every Nolan Ryan card that's ever come out, I'm like, yeah, that's a beautiful baseball card. And I think Gwen's kind of the same. I don't know. Do you feel the same way? Like, Well, yeah. I mean, they both played for teams that have these kind of classic designs. So the Padres use some funky colors in their jerseys and designs, um, brown and, and gold mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, Nolan Ryan played for the Angels and the Astros. So the Astros, always, I mean, sure. uh, their, their design now is a little different. But back in the 80s, it had that, that bright orange and the yellow and the white, you know. Oh, yeah. So those classy, I think that adds to the aesthetic with the, the jerseys and the colors that they um, were part of. Oh, sure. Yes, that absolutely. Yeah, and I think um, the Orioles as well. The kind oh, yeah. of the, the just, it's... I mean, they're kind of ugly, but in a really nice, appealing way. Like it's <laughs> reminds you of childhood. Wow, that's ugly. People wore those, you know. But yeah, um, I don't know. So, so you've you you so you found the Facebook group. You said the Vintage Wax and Packs group, and then you realized, yeah. hey, I really want to. I just want to keep. I, I want to focus on unopened exclusively. Or, or what was your process? Uh, well, I so unopened is just one kind of area uh, that mm -hmm. I uh, of things mm -hmm. that I collect. Um, I have some vintage, so I've got early tobacco cards. Um, I've got it both in baseball, and I also collect some non sports, so Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. Um, and it's, it's kind of a big thing in those non uh, or yeah, non sport areas to collect sketch cards they're, they're not really a big deal in baseball cards mm -hmm. uh, baseball cards there are a few sketch cards that you can find um, but what they are they are um, one of one artist sketches that are randomly inserted in packs um, <clears throat> and so I've got a, a fairly sizable sketch card collection of Star Wars uh, Lord of the Rings and, and quite a few baseball sketch cards uh, even though you know, people are chasing now parallels and numbered cards and, and autos and so forth and, and patch or excuse me, relic cards and, and other things. And sketch cards haven't really caught on in baseball yet, but mm -hmm. I think they will. Um, so I just like that the unique one of one aspect, especially with sketch cards that they um, they're they're pieces of art, really, um, <clears throat> and, and unique. So I've got sketch cards, I've got the unopened uh, and vintage um, stuff. So that's kind of my wheelhouse. Sure. Well, uh, now how far back, you said you have some uh, old uh, tobacco cards or the T206s oh, yeah. or T205s or what? Uh, let's see, I can show it. You wanna see a few? <laughs> Sure, that's fine. Sure. <laughs> over there. Okay, so these are my. Um, oh, awesome. So I got a couple of uh, Alan Ginter up there at the top. Okay. So those are from 1880. Awesome. Uh, we didn't really practice this. And then I've got. Yeah, no, we... <laughs> uh, then I've got some T206. You can see uh, that's my kind of Hall of Famer row up there. 
Sure. With uh, yeah, Matthewson yeah. and you got the 80 Joss. I, I got see. the Nath Lajaway and a few others. So oh, beautiful. I've got quite a few Matthewson actually in other cards. Oh, it's wow. either some of my others. Oh, awesome. You know, 50, I love the 50s. I love, oh. love anything like with art, you know? Mm hmm. The 53s and the 56s. Yeah. That that fifty three satchel page that is one of the oh, yeah, that's, greatest that's spaces. A yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So that's a little bit of my vintage. It's not everything in there. Um, sure. And I've got a few. Uh, they're just sitting out right now, but I, I don't know quite know how to display them yet. I've got a few. I mean, this isn't really unopened, so. But I've got oh, no, these. Uh, I've got these turkey reds. Turkey you, reds. The T threes. Oh wow! So, so the difference on these, you would um, send in coupons um, from your packs of cigarettes or whatever cigars. I can't remember which ones, but you'd send in coupons and then you would get a card back. So this is my side young and oh awesome! Oh, that's very cool. There's my Huey Jennings. I don't know I, if you know of Huey Jennings. I do. Well, the T two O six. He's got. I think it's the same. It's like a, the same in a miniature version without the the field, right? Where he's doing the yeah. same pose. Yeah, the T206. The full, the full yeah. pose. Yeah, that is beautiful. And there's my chief bender. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So anyway. They look yeah, good. I, got, I love vintage stuff. That, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. What's the oldest uh, unopened item you have in your collection? Oldest unopened. Um, Let's see. It's got to be my, yeah, it's these. I'll show you. Sure. So it's uh, it's non-sport. Oh, okay. Awesome. So I, I'm i really into Empire Strikes Back stuff, original Empire Strikes Back. And then I kind of branched out into Star Wars. So um, these oh, are, cool. so when Star Wars cards came out, top Star Wars, they came out in five series. Mm -hmm. So uh and you you probably know the series one a box of that is really pricey so that that's my i might have to wait for a little bit i've got series three four and then this is kind of a unique version of series five so i've got three four and five still got to collect one and two <clears throat> so these are all 19 well let's see i think series five by the time it came out was 78 but the rest are 77. Okay. Well, that's my yeah this is my earliest unopened stuff well and you you said series five is unique yeah this particular one is unique because when they came out with series five mm -hmm. i think they must have had a bunch of series four boxes left over and so they used to begin with they used a bunch of series four boxes um and then they what they did is they put a little sticker right here oh that's cool that says series five to let you know that this is a series five box, but it's, it's, you know, it still has the, the rest of the box is a series four box. Interesting. I've never and, seen that before. That's <laughs> yeah. It's a, at first I thought it was a miswrap because mm -hmm. uh, Steve, he, he labeled it series five, you know, mm -hmm. and it says series four on the top. I'm like, wait, hold on. What did I get here? <laughs> what is this thing? Well, and, and then I've done a little research since and, uh, then I realized, oh, it really is series five. And why does it, it says new cantina series? New cantina scenes. Oh, new cantina scenes. Sorry, I misread that. Okay. Yeah. Is this, uh, it might be reverse, but um, uh, yeah. yeah oh, new no, cantina I, yep, yep. scenes. Okay. So in series five, there are, it's it's pretty unique series. It's supposed to be orange and so is the box, but um, they have a lot of behind the scenes images in series five of Star Wars, um, some kind of like production photos of the model shop and the director and actors behind the scenes and, and so forth. Okay. Um, and then they had cantina scenes with some of the creatures that some, I think even some that may not even show up in the actual movie or, or just really briefly like way in the background. Okay. Um, but they get different, you know, you get different views of them in those yes. cards. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I know next to nothing about 
Star yeah. Wars. So it's, yeah, that's interesting that there's a, I mean, tops, it's not surprising tops would reuse. <laughs> yeah. Given what they did with football and, it seems once they got to the end of a run and there were still leftover cards, they kind of freaked out and went, what do we do with all this stuff? You know? <laughs> so yeah. what are some, what are some of your, uh, your favorite uh, other, other items in your, in your unopened collection that you have? Yeah. You've, you've um, showed me a few pretty awesome items uh, before we got started. Here. <laughs> uh, here, I'll, I'll show a few other boxes. Sure. Um, sure. My, my favorite boxes, I, I have a run of Fleer, um, rack pack boxes and it, I don't know if you found this to be the case but it seems like whenever I'm chasing something mm -hmm. or you know looking or hunting something down it might take a year it might take two it might take three years but it seems like when I finally get it, it seems like the very next week or two weeks later another one pops up that you know very similar kind of thing <laughs> Sure. Like, I get two and when it took me three years to find the first one. Yes, yes, um, I've, I've done that as well or noticed that as well. Uh, so th that happened with me with 84 Fleer. Uh, these are pretty hard to come by, 84 Fleer. This one doesn't have, usually they come with a um, cardboard thing on top. This one doesn't have it, but um, these 83 Fleer, or excuse me, 84 Fleer rack pack boxes. Wow. Um, they're not super expensive per se, but they're just, they're just, and then I, I picked that one up and then like a month or two later, this one popped up on eBay from Hawaii. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and it had the header and it's like in perfect condition. Wow. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to pick this up. <laughs> well, that's. I, I only that... need one, you know, for a collection. <laughs> but I ended up with two. Well, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you don't see very many of those with the with the top of the packs covered, yeah. and, the, and those are and those are the cello racks, just like the the first one yeah. you showed. Oh, wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty rare, pretty tough to come by. Same thing, kind of same similar thing happened to me this year or this summer. I was looking for um, a box of Empire Strikes Back rack packs, mm -hmm. and I'll show you these. So I I found I, I got a box, wow. and then I think I must have forgot that I won it at auction or something. Because then at the national, I, I found another one, Jackpot Sports. You know Chad, mm -hmm. Jack. You've interviewed him. Yes, um, he's been on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he had another one. I was like, wait, I can't pass up another one. These are <laughs> come by too. Sure. Um, these rack pack boxes. That's a beautiful box. Can you show that again? That's a beautiful box. Wow. Yeah, that's 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 really nice. I've never seen one of those. Yeah, this is series two. So Empire Strikes Back came out in three series. Mm -hmm. And um, the rack pack boxes that you'll find are going to be series two for the most part. Um, I did talk to um oh who was it uh anyway i i, I know that there are actually series one rack pack boxes out there mm -hmm. um, they exist there are series one racks you can buy you can find them on ebay they're pretty expensive but um there are sealed boxes still out there uh they're but they're really hard to come by so series one really super rare one or you know like a handful out there wow. series two there's more of those rack packs and, and there's less series three than series two i i don't i don't think they did series three in rack packs oh okay for empire strikes back so oh, okay you know as reference here's the i got them right here here's the actual boxes so <clears throat> wax boxes so these are wax boxes so this is what series one looks like it's on, it's in a red box which is weird because the rack box for series two is red. I don't know what, you know, what's going on there, but mm -hmm. um, this is series, this is what a series two wax box looks like. It's blue. And then series three is yellow. Okay. But then, as far as I know, I've never seen series three rack packs. Interesting. And I don't I've, I've never seen 
rack boxes either. So I don't, I don't think they did them. I could be mistaken, but I don't think they did series three. Yeah, it's always interesting to me how the inconsistency with some some of these companies. One year they're producing rack packs for or rack packs, the next year they don't, or they're certain series get rack packs, others just get wax. To me, it's so it'd be nice to if I could find someone who would talk or come on the podcast who is an original worker with at the Tops factory that would that could answer some of the or Don or Donris or any of the others. That would be a really uh, I don't know if you know anybody, but uh, so far I've been able no. to track you. <laughs> no, I'm just no, I, I live in rural Idaho. I, <laughs> I don't know if anyone retired here from Tops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not that I but, know. Uh, oh, sure, sure. Um, so, what are some of the uh, some of the baseball items that you or do? You, is yeah. baseball the main sport that you collect? It seems oh, yeah. like you have a For lot sure. of non-sport. Most of what I have, most of what I have is baseball. Cool. Um, Here's one other one, one open item I, I ought to show uh, excuse sure. me, a box before sure. I show some racks. Sure. Um, <clears throat> this is, okay, so, you know, pretty common. This is 88 leaf, mm -hmm. um, otherwise junk. But um, I did a cross-country trip this summer, and I stopped by um, Joe Curcio's ice cream shop. He's, he's posted a couple times about his ice cream shop. Mm -hmm. And um, what I understand, he's one of the founding members of the Vintage Wax Packs group. And he uh, he wraps his own boxes. So, oh, that's, so that's cool. His own, that's his own <laughs> label. <laughs> that's it, awesome. So it's not, it's not really like authenticated. He, he doesn't do that. Sure. You know, he, he's not going to guarantee these are like legit packs or anything like that. It's more for uh, promotion for his ice cream shop. That's awesome. Goodfellas ice cream shop. Yeah. So when I, I went, I visited his ice cream shop and I was like, oh man, with the, the Murphy on top, I've got to pick up a Joe. Oh, Joe absolutely. Rapp. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I've seen that uh, he sells packs there, I guess, behind the counter in addition to yeah. his ice cream. That's a pretty cool business. Yeah. And he, yeah, it's, it's a fun place to go. It's he, uh, we picked up 89, what was it, 89 Don rest for like a quarter, a rack pack. He, he sells them for really cheap. It's it's a way to get uh, kids involved in baseball cards, I think, um, mm -hmm. but also draw people into the shop and sure, they can do baseball cards and ice cream at the same time. Sure. It's a fun place. How, how does your uh, family feel about your collecting? Are they supportive? Are they excited or do they care? Uh, um, my wife, she runs her own business. Um, so I support her and she supports me. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, and my kids, they, yeah, I have like one or two that semi care and seem interested. They all <laughs> like my room. So this used to be, uh, uh, my wife and I, we have eight kids and, <laughs> and, but we're out of the baby stage now. So this used to be the nursery. Um, and our youngest is five years old now. Uh, they have, and he hasn't slept in here for a year or two. So I'm like, uh, can I have the nursery? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I converted the nursery into my man cave and, uh, they, the kids kind of like hanging out in here. So that's kind of cool. Sure. Uh, they, they're, they aren't really interested in the packs or the, you know, the collecting per se. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but they like, they like having the stuff around and sure. And see. I put up so well eight kids you are a hero <laughs> <laughs> I, you have you, nothing but nothing but props and respect because that that's 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 amazing um that's that's really cool i have two and i don't know i i'm one of four and i don't know how my parents did it so you know no props to you <laughs> uh, our, our youngest three so we have sure. um, the youngest so we have twins and then a little brother those are oh. the last three Okay. And they're all within the year. Well, the twins, of course, same day. And then the mm -hmm. little brother, year and a half. So the three of them mm -hmm. are kind of like triplets and they're on their, their own little family. And Aww. they kind of, <laughs> they're at the point where they don't mess everything up all the time. And sure. it's really fun right now. So they kind sure. of watch out for each other. It's oh, good. that's nice. Yeah. No, no, it's fun. Yeah. My daughter is four. My son is two. He's almost three, but, um, and they're, they're at that stage now where they, 
not when they're not fighting, which is only once in a while that you know they kind of have each other's back a little bit. Oh, you good. Know, yeah, which is I think that's kind of what you're saying with yours, which is nice that they're yeah you know, that there's that dynamic. I, I, but I couldn't to create this room like mm -hmm. I don't know two or three years ago. Sure. It would have been destroyed. You know, I, I put these cellos and racks up on the walls, and yeah. they would have all been taken apart. You know, opened. I'd have found common cards on the ground mm -hmm. uh, it would have been yeah it would have been a disaster yeah there was there was only been one time so far that my my the oldest my daughter Sophia she got into my, my area where my rack packs are and I knew she did even though she I didn't catch her doing it but I, I walked in and the first of all the door was open which is a major red flag and then the, the packs were just slightly moved you i could tell she had gone in and picked them up and looked at them and set them back down which is kind of sweet but i was also i was relieved that <laughs> she didn't <laughs> but it was like okay i'm gonna need more more security here for this because yeah they don't it's, get it <laughs> yeah I, we've had a few uh pack ripping sessions you know mm -hmm. as a family sure um and the youngest he just thinks that's what you do with all packs, right? Not just <laughs> not sure. just the hanger box that you buy at Walmart, um, but he thinks it's all packs. And so I, I, he has run into a few of my cellos. He he opened up a few '87 Fleers that I didn't want opened, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm dr uh, thankfully all of my well. All the the ones that I have that they could possibly get to are wrapped by baseball card exchange. So hopefully for mine, God forbid, I hope this doesn't happen. But I am worried now because, like you, I'm ripping with them, ripping packs with them. So I just know one day they're going to go, "Ooh, let's open this <laughs> like like we do with Daddy." You know, right? They'll be that barrier of at least they got to get through the cellophane. Hopefully by then they lose interest. But. So, <laughs> but do you get most of your uh, uh, packs authenticated, or what do you? What's, what's your uh, process? So like? I've been kind of. I haven't had any authenticated yet. I've, I've bought mm -hmm. some that are already authenticated. Sure, sure. Um, I'm kind of saving up for a pile, and then I'll send it off to Steve. Sure. Um, so you know, just to I don't know. I don't know the magic number. I haven't done it before. Sure. Um, I've done the, the the card grading thing through PSA, um, and there's certain certain numbers where it's kind of worth doing it. Uh, so I've got to hit that sweet spot. Sure. Probably ten or twenty, I might send them off. Or if I I went to the national this last summer, I should have just taken a bunch with me. But um, if I go to the national again this summer, or like another coming summer, mm -hmm. then I'll just take a box with me and. Sure. Drop them off at his table. Was that was that your first national? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, What was your impression of the of the show and of the unopened selection? Yeah. Uh, so the unopened. Um, let's see. There were about five or six tables that were vintage mm -hmm. unopened. So the usual suspects, right? So yeah. Kurt and Steve. And Chad of Jackpot Sports, they were all there. And then there are a few others. Um, and they had really good stuff. I I picked up one of my Star Wars, but I, mm -hmm. I ended up picking a bunch of up a bunch of Star Wars stuff. <laughs> uh, Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars. I, I intended to buy more baseball, but I ended up buying Star Wars. <laughs> sure. There. Yeah, to, yeah. To me, it shows the unopened side of the hobby is still so niche that it's even at even at a big show like the national. It's really there's amazing stuff, but you really you're dealing with a, a handful of tables where you you can honestly make a purchase. Uh, that that is at least. But I've been to three nationals. I, I didn't go this past time. Um, but it, yeah, it's very. It reminds you of how niche it is. Yeah, because most people just don't don't sell that stuff. Don't sell it. Um, yeah, but yeah, you have to uh, wandering through the whole thing. It takes a good day and a half, I think, just to walk by every single table. Yeah, it just even have anything that you might want. So I okay. I made sure that when I went, I had a few things in mind that I wanted to get. 
Um, <clears throat> one of them was a Christy Mathewson vintage card. Uh, I found like four or five examples of it. And then I bought the best example that I, that was at the show. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I had that, that kind of laser focus. Uh, if you don't have a focus, man, you just get lost in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but yeah, there reached a point every, every year there reaches a point where I'm not seeing stuff anymore, where yeah. you're looking and you're just like, okay, I don't even know if this is productive anymore because I'm just, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, everything, every table looks the same, you know, um, definitely like by the end of day two, I'm like, all right, this is getting down to the, you know, the wire now, another, yeah. another few hours. And I think I'm done here. Um, I right. mean, you could spend more time. You could always spend more time looking, but it just, for me, I don't know, after about, a day and a half like is that so you went for a day and a half total or how long were you yeah so i went um so they let's see is it wednesday or thursday when it's a half day yeah wednesday it's yeah it's wednesday mm -hmm. and then i went all day thursday so day and a half yeah um but yeah by the end of that thursday you're exactly <laughs> right like yeah. swimming you know <laughs> yeah over yep. saturation yeah I and think you have to kind of wade through all of the modern. I, I, I don't understand the modern all the way very well yet. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of have to wade through it and just, um, walk by it. Uh, so you have to get through a lot of that to get to try to find some nuggets here and there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Um, I think we're going with we the most we've gone. We went for four days. I think the second time we went, we went to Cleveland in 18, Chicago in 19. I think we were there, yeah, three and a half days. And I was like, I'm over this. This is so much fun, but I'm so over it. But yeah, no, it's it's a, it's it seems like modern. I'm I'm right there with you with modern. I don't even know what a lot of the good modern what's a good modern card versus like I I, I know Luka Doncic is his rookie card at one point was really expensive and now it's cool. I just, yeah. Modern basketball, especially, I don't know the slightest bit about it. And I don't really want to learn either. I don't know. I suppose I should want to learn more. about. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would like, you know, I, um, I think many people kind of hate him as a baseball player, but I, I, I admire Bryce Harper. I think he's kind of a gnarly, cool looking guy and, mm -hmm. and he's, He's a family man, and he uh, he's just a really good player. And I think he might go to the Hall of Fame one day. My own opinion, but mm -hmm. um, so I, I, one time I tried I tried to collect Bryce Harper rookies. Mm -hmm. And you look up a page on the internet with Bryce Harper rookies, and it's like you're wading through thirty or forty different rookies. It's like, wait, which one is the one, or which one do I want to try to chase after? Which one's even, you know, mm -hmm. going to be worth my time it's, yeah that's just the rookie card let alone all of the other stuff that might be out there yeah that's true the numbered cards parallels autographs relics yeah to me it's just it's too it's <laughs> it's too complicated yeah. i think you're right though I, uh, bryce harper i do see him he i think he doesn't get as much love in the fan community because he's not he doesn't come across as nice of a guy as mike trout he's not yeah. as approachable but then again you hear him uh, doing like he'll do these wonderful acts of charity and never ever public publicize, you know, publicize it or anything. He'll just, he'll yeah. just do something incredibly nice or kind for someone who's experiencing homelessness or something. And then someone, someone else will tweet about it, you know, how social media is, but he, you hear about these things where I'm like, wow, he, he seems like a really deep down. He's a really good guy who just has a bad rap. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, I could, but yeah, no, even Mike Trout. I, I, I uh, yeah. like this year. I, yeah, maybe he's mellowing out a little bit too because mm -hmm. this year, my it was my Padres. You know, mm -hmm. Blake Snell who hit him in the hand and broke his hand, mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> I don't know if you remember his rookie year or his second, third year when he was playing with the Nationals. Um, whenever he got hit, he was charging the mound, throwing his helmet down, mm -hmm. brandishing his bat. You know. But uh, this time around, and he got his hand broken. He was out for two or three months. Mm -hmm. As he was walking down and the trainers came out, he turned to Snell and Snell turned to him. And Snell, you know, was shaking his head like, you know, it slipped out of my hand or whatever. And Harper said to him, I know you didn't mean to do that. And then he walked away. So yeah. I, I think that's a sign of maturity on his part. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, 
Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I've, I, when he first came up, I didn't like him when he was so brash and cocky, but then, yeah, after a few years, maybe in the last four years, my parents hate him because they're Braves fans. It's like, Oh, my dad's like, Oh, I can't stand. Bro. I'm like, I think he's all right. I understand why you don't like him, but I think he's a, he's a good dude. Um, there are some good, there are some good players in today's game. I think it's an exciting time to, you know, obviously the angels aren't very good, but I mean, Mike Trout is, I mean, he, he could, he's a top 50 player of all time, potentially. Yeah. Um, it's an yeah. interesting time, but I just, yeah, I just don't have the, I enjoy watching it, but collecting some oh, yeah, water, sure. I just don't have the, do you watch a lot of games or are you occasional? Oh, yeah. Or, or, yeah. I, um, we're, uh, since I live in Idaho, you know, we don't suffer as many black mark or blackout games as everyone else does. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can watch almost all of Padres. Uh, the only games that are blacked out here are Rockies and Mariners games. Anything else we can watch. So, Oh, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, I watch almost, I, I try to, uh, it's hard to sit and watch an entire game, you know, and putting the kids down, whatever. But I try to put in a few innings a day, you know. Sure. <laughs> kind of like workout. Try to get my workout in, and then a few innings of baseball a day. Yes, I think kids have an uncanny ability. As soon as you start, they realize you're trying to watch something. They scurry in. What are you doing? <laughs> I was taking a moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what are some? Uh, do you have some uh, uh, baseball items that are that yeah. you'd like to show? Or, or... I mean. Yeah, let's do a little show and tell here. Sure, so yeah, yeah. I uh many in the vintage wax and packs group know that I'm a Del Murphy collector. Mm-hmm. So I pulled out my run of my very best. I didn't pull them all out, but I pulled out my very best. So I'll go in reverse chronological order. Sure. Um I try to find Murphy racks where um we've got Murphy next to you know Hall of Famers or superstars. Mm-hmm. So here's my 87 rack. And you've got on there Ricky Henderson, Don Mattingly, and Carlton Fisk. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you can't. So Del Murphy, um, his base card is on the A sheet. So um, it'd be really super rare or lucky to find it because it would have to be right here in this spot. Okay. Um, I do have a 80. Oh, let me just pull it off here for a sure. Second. I don't really, I don't really collect later than 87, but here's my 88. So this is actually what I'm talking about for uh, 86, 87, 88. He was on the A sheet. So you, it's going to be hard pressed to find his base card. Okay. But every now and again, um, as, as you probably know, mm-hmm. um, the glossy all-star card is not in that spot. Sure. It's, it's just happens, you know, maybe once or twice a case or something like that. I don't know. Sure. I don't know the odds, but every now and again it happens. And so then a base card will, you, you'll see a base card right there. Mm-hmm. And then to have the one base card that you really want yeah. showing uh, is going to be super rare. So this particular rack, I, I picked it up on eBay for pretty cheap, but this is super rare because it's the Bert, uh, Murphy base card mm-hmm. in the All Star glossy spot. And then you got Nolan Ryan and Cecil Fielder there. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's awesome. And it's I've, a pretty I've, cool rack. It's not really worth a whole lot, but it's, it's definitely very rare. Oh, sure. Um, so here's some more in reverse. So back to uh, my reverse chronological order. Here's my 86, my best 86 rack. Okay. So Murphy was on a few um, 86 Mm-hmm. He was on the glossy card, base card, and then he was the Braves leader card as well. So we got awesome. Jim Rice and George Brett on either side of him. Well, that's cool. I that like drives those, me crazy. Though. Oh, look, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say the same thing. It drives me crazy when they're upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I always want them facing the same way, but. Yep, yep. 86 is one of the worst years for that, too. Uh, I don't know what it is. All the 86 racks you ever see are just a nightmare. Okay, my 85s and my 84s are my best years that I've picked up. Sure. I've, I've found that, you know, the, the ones that are the very best usually come, I find them on eBay like in a lot, mm-hmm. like a lot of 10, 85 racks or 10, 84, or whatever. And someone will put on, uh, they'll post, um, you know, 15 racks for whatever price. 
and the one that you really want is in there but that's kind of sometimes the only way to get it mm -hmm. so here's uh 85 with his bass with um superstar and at least at the time fernando valenzuela and then cal ripkin cool this is one of my coolest so this is also 85 this is probably one of my coolest del murphy racks oh wow that's awesome got the pucket you got the there. kirby rocket or kirby pucket um rookie the del murphy all-star and then the willie mccovey glossy on the other side that's awesome that's, that's that's kind of my my favorite type of rack where he's in the middle flanked by a couple of hall of famers sure that's one of my favorite murphy cards too i, I love that that 85 all-star i don't know why i mean i think it's the logo it's just so retro with a little star yeah, yeah that's cool yeah yeah very nice yeah, and one more 85. Um, here's the so with his glossy with a couple of Hall of Famers. Very nice. Okay, now to 84. Now this one's a this is a really cool rack. <laughs> so there he is on his uh, these are pretty hard to find. Mm -hmm. Like he was on a RBI leader card and Braves leader cards. Um they're trying kind of tricky to pick up sometimes because people just don't hold on to them or, you know, or list them or whatever. So I found that one with Boggs and uh, Ozzy Smith. That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. You don't see too many 84 racks with the team leaders on top. I think you're right about that. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah. They're tricky. They're tricky to find. Uh, oh, here's another one flanked. I love these ones again. So this is 84. Oh, cool. There's Murphy flanked by Raleigh Fingers and George Brett. Oh, awesome. Raleigh Fingers, he's another one. He's not a, you know, the market isn't that strong for him. He's got some awesome cards. I don't know if it's the mustache yeah. or what it is, but yeah, all well, of his cards. Uh, <laughs> well, he played, so before he played for the Brewers, he played for the Padres. Sure. And he played for the Brewers. So he plays, again, I think it's the color aesthetic as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Raleigh fingers and that Padres uniform brown and yellow. Oh, yeah. oh I love it. Um, a few people in the group have a rack similar to this where you have a double Murphy. Mm -hmm. So all the glossy and the base. That's awesome. I, I have yet to get a, tr I don't know if it's possible to get a triple Murphy rack or not. I, I haven't seen one. I mean, uh, a few well, doubles. But. Well, if you if the Braves leader card is going to be in the cell furthest from the header, so I mean, it's it's probably yeah. possible. How likely is that to happen? Yeah, <laughs> I'll keep my eye out. That's for sure. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know if I see these, one. These eighty fours and eighty fives, uh, you know, as you know, the collation is a little bit squirrely, mm -hmm. so you can get some pretty interesting combinations. Absolutely. Um. This is another one of those. I, I picked up an 84 Donruss, and then like a week later, I found this. Oh, wow. So we got Murphy, Boggs, and then Ken Griffey Sr. So not a Hall of Famer, but definitely a star. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's a, that's a beautiful Boggs card. That whole Donruss, 84 Donruss, is such an awesome, on, such an awesome set. I love the design. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Okay, so here are my biggies. Um, I had a couple of eighty-two tops, Mur uh, Murphys, and then I let's see. Did I pick this up in the group? I either picked this up on the group or on eBay. So this is a uh, this is a miswrap. Mm -hmm. um, so the as you can see the the wrapping covers the head card there and interestingly enough it's dane org who is another <laughs> player that i really like and collect <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a few of i've met him a, a couple times oh that's cool um, so you know not a not a slouch either in that spot sure and then you have Tony Perez, hey. Famer in the middle and then murphy nice and visible and then on the back of this one i don't know if you can see this or not ah uh, let's see glare is kind of tough but it's okay that, that can you see that's tim rains in this spot right oh here? yeah yep yep i don't know if it's i can i can see the comic 
on the top. That's how I know it's Tim Wright's. <laughs> uh, well, Tim Wright's in that spot right there. Cool. Yeah, the, so mis the, the miswraps are so cool. Can you hold that up so people can get a good look at that, the YouTube viewers? Because that is, yeah, it's so cool where the baseball logo, where the baseball player logo should be at the top is actually see-through. And then they put it, they put it in the cell with the, with the card, which is just, again, tops quality control <laughs> in, the, in the early 80s. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's a way I I really glad I picked that one up. And then this is my uh, pride and joy, Greg Nuss Nussbaum mm -hmm. contacted me on this one. So this used to be his rack. He's the one who found it. Um, so you got Murphy there. And then uh, so this is 1980. These 1980s are just a bear to find with Murphy showing. Mm -hmm. um, and you got the Brock and the Yaz leader. But this this rack is super crazy because on the back, this happens every now and again. I've got cars that slip the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And the car that slips on the wrong way on the back is Ozzy Smith. Oh man. That's awesome. And it's when, when he was on the Padres. Well, wow, that is that is amazing. So I'm not uh, I asked yeah. Greg, I'm like, how do I even display this to give it its due credit, you know? <laughs> I have to get one of those, uh, you know, those high top sneaker. Oh yeah, that, like it's around so you can see it. Well, like I, floats or whatever. Oh sure. Well, I've actually thought about trying to take like one of the dis the the cases that people use to display footballs. I've thought about trying to do that, and like if there's a rack you want to see both sides of, you put it kind of. In, you'd have to figure out how to, how to put it in the middle, but I think it might actually fit. Uh, I've, I've been looking at Hobby Lobby at him, and I'm like, that way I could walk to the other side and see the back. But I don't know if that would. <laughs> but yeah, <we're> rotating. <laughs> uh, I could hang it from my ceiling. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> add some kind of sophistication like to the man cave. Yeah, <laughs> it just rotates up up above. <laughs> no, that's a cool. That's a cool pack. That's the cool. That's the coolest rack. Uh, <laughs> so see, there's a couple more. These are my non Murphy. So sure. uh, we were talking beforehand that 80s, so that one reason I like collecting 80s stuff is someday it'll be like what the 70s are now, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Sure. Um, and I mean, it's, it's more overproduced, yes, but there are, there are racks that are just uh, so unique from the 80s that, that you can't really find otherwise like from the 70s or 60s or whatever 70s i should probably say very few from the 60s but anyway um where you have like triple or quadruple this one i i think you i've either got four or five hall of famers so you got whitey herzog there then this leader card has mm -hmm. tom siever steve carlton fergie jenkins and then you got tim Raines on that side yeah, that's so, a beauty. Did you buy that on eBay by chance? Let's see this one. I think that was on my watch list. <laughs> it's, oh it was, yeah, I got. So there's this guy. Mm -hmm. You probably his name is Ryan Rancho mm -hmm. on eBay. Yeah, that's I don't, right. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's part of our group. He is. It's Ryan Maxwell. Ryan Maxwell. Yep, Maxwell? that's Ryan Maxwell. Yep, yeah, that's him. He's Ryan Rancho. Yep. I'm like, he always has the best stuff. Okay, now I, I know Ryan Maxwell. Yep, okay. yep, that's him. Okay, okay, I didn't realize, that's cool. Yeah, because I, I thought, yeah, the, as, soon, as soon as you held that up, I'm like, I have contemplated that pack at some point in the, because it's so, like you point out, it's so hard to get, that's, I mean, that's five Hall of Famers on the front, right? Yeah. Because you got Fergie Jenkins and Carlton and C, yeah, that's just amazing. And, and Herzog and yeah. Reigns. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So this, that's a Ryan Rancho. I've got five or six Ryan Ranchos. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Here's another one. This is probably the, probably the top rack that I own. Oh, wow. So, Rod Crew, uh, Seaver and Nolan Ryan. And what, I, I like this rack because you have just the one base card and mm -hmm. you have a highlight card and then an all-star card. And the cardboard header, right? That's the cardboard header variation. Yes. 
which is which, which is which is rarer. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's yeah. really, I mean, to find something like that from the 70s is super hard. Oh, yeah. 80s, oh, oh, yeah. 80s a little bit easier, you know? And they're still it's, available. They're out there. And they're affordable. A and they're more affordable. <laughs> a triple Hall of Famer 76 tops rack or something is going to be, that's more than a mortgage payment. I mean, that's a lot yeah. of money. Uh, so yeah. yeah, no, the '80s are where it's. That's the comfort. I think every, all collectors have to find their comfort zone, and I think you and I have similar comfort zones. Well, we're both teachers, so we're obviously. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so yeah, like the, the '80s are. Yeah. They're like in the hundred hundreds. Of exactly. Dollars. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, thousands that, that, of dollars. Yeah. Exactly. That is a that is a beautiful pack. So that's that's my those are my top. Cool. Racks. That's awesome. Well, well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, did you have any other items that you wanted to that you wanted to share, or was that the? Uh, any, Let's see. Anything? I think, uh, I think that. Yes. I, I think that's it. Okay. Perfect. I just those are, to... the, those are the highlights. Um, I did. You know, uh, since you asked. Sure. Yeah. Sure. By all means. Uh, in our group, Eric. Thompson, he's kind of like the 89 Fleer guru. <laughs> sure. And um, I, I pick up these Billy Ripken um, variations. So I've, I've got a, I've got one that's graded. It's a wide out. So when they tried to fix the um, bat and mm -hmm. the, the curse sure. on the end of the bat, um, they, did, they tried different things. And so the black box was the eventual, you know, uh, solution. But mm -hmm. there was this phase right in the middle when there was like white out and white scribble and black scribble and a few other things that they tried. And this one is the black scribble. So that happened. So it's just like a little super small window of time when you get these black scribbles. There aren't very sure. many of those black scribbles in existence. Mm -hmm. Let alone to have it on top of a rack pack. Yeah, that's crazy. Like crazy. There's only a few. I've seen a few pop up in the group, um, but they're just super rare. That's yeah, awesome. So that's you know, again, what we were saying at the beginning. I guess that's the way to get a good way to wrap it up. Uh, that's one thing I love about it is just finding these these one of a kind things that are just so rare. Maybe not super valuable right now, but uh, doesn't really matter. Right now, it's kind of for show in my room. Oh, sure, sure. No, yeah, no. To me, it is all about the, the rarity. I mean, and the 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 fact that the 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 random ways that the packs were distributed. You know, the fact that some of the that triple Hall of Famer eighty two rack, like what? Just how in the world did that come out of the factory? That awesome. You know, like that is just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for all of the Nolan Ryan 82, 82 tops cards out there, how many? Ryan Seaver Carew racks are there 10, 15, yeah. you know, not very yeah. many, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So to me, it's all about the rarity. Well, the, the odds. Yes, absolutely. I mean, with, as you know, with, with Fleer and Donruss, mm -hmm. there's, there's fewer of them out there like the racks, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the same um, collation that top, tops in some years try to keep to a collation, I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, at least the, that's how they come out in the racks. But Fleer and Donruss didn't really have that. And so um, you can pick up some Fleer. And, there's there's some more variation in the Fleer and the Donruss. There just aren't very many of them out there. That's the problem. Yes, absolutely. With, uh, with the cards showing, you know, on the Fleer and Donruss racks. Well, uh, yeah. And you mentioned 83 Donruss, you know, because you and I both have an affinity for that, for the cello racks of that year. And those are just a bear to find the, uh, i know uh, crazy i mean the it, yeah that those are there are white whales there that you can that, uh, hunt and hunt and hunt for uh i have one right now in my collection and it's got ripkin and lee smith both on top and oh, that's wow. that one's staying in the pc because i'm just uh, i will never see another pack like that yeah. again like yeah. as rare as these things are like so yeah, those of you out there that have 83 Donruss, put them on eBay so Derek and I can bid on them and uh, 
or collaborate. Yeah. So one of us can agree to back. Yeah. yeah, we. I remember. The, I still remember the rack you beat me on. Uh, is that eighty-five Donruss with Gwyn on the the Diamond King? So Gwyn on one side and Cal Ripken on the other. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, okay. that I mean, that is a cool pack. You you you, you got a good one on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's so. I I forgot that you were the yeah. Um, my YouTube the people watching I was the YouTube. Underbidder. Will, okay, well there we go. Okay, well uh, <laughs> I'm off yep. the underbidder. You'll you'll get me you'll get me next time I'm sure that's that's how it works you win some you lose some but yeah. well, th well, well Derek well thank you so much for taking the time to chat uh, about your collection and about your you, you know your family in the background and the hobby and everything it's really it's really been a pleasure it's nice to get to know some of the the people in the group and hopefully I'll see you in the, at the national yeah yeah thank you Brandon absolutely <laughs> absolutely. Oh, well, until next time, folks, hope you enjoyed that. It's always nice to chat with a fellow collector. Take care of each other. Keep collecting vintage and open baseball, everybody.